Previously on Blue Healers. Good night, copper. Police, don't move! Take him, Joe. Secure the weapon, Joe. We come on in! Put your gun away and secure the weapon. Down the ground. Right, right. Down the ground. Get down to the ground. Constable, it's okay. Put your gun away and secure the weapon. Part time is 358 to BK7. Report of a police shooting. Male single gunshot. Quiet. You don't have any regrets about what happened? I had no option but to discharge my weapon. And how did you feel about that? I didn't feel anything. I was doing my job. You must have felt something, Joe. Look, I didn't kill the guy. My sergeant was in danger. I had to do something. No one's denying that. No one's blaming you. But it's not easy to shoot someone, is it? Even in the line of duty. No. So, you must have felt something. Why bottle it up? I'm not bottling anything up. Right. Your colleagues, what's their attitude? Their attitude? Are they sympathetic? I guess it depends on what you mean by sympathetic. Hey! <laughs> Drinks on me! Hey! <laughs> hey, someone win lotto. Fane Hope's just got into the Oaks. Bit of a local triumph for Gavin Harrison. This owner. bloke is the best goddamn trainer in the side of the black star, but I don't care who knows it. I love this man. <laughs> Drinks on me. I'm shouting the bar. What are you lot having? No, no, not for me, Chrissy. Yeah, I'll pass things, Chris. Oh, are you sure he can afford it? I'll be in. If he's buying, I'll have two. I, know. I thought Joe would be back from CSU by now. It's an all-day session. The way she was talking, I'm surprised she went back for a second session. <laughs> A bit of arm twisting. But I mean, she seems okay though, don't you, right? Of course she's not. Yeah. Look, Joe's not as tough as she thinks she's. Oh, mate. Is. I mean, she's gung ho, but at the end of the day, she's just. Go on, don't let me stop you. Anyone else got anything to say about me, or would you rather wait until I left? Hey, Joe, it's all right, we're all on your side. But why is it I get the general impression that everyone thinks I'm some sort of basket case? We don't. Well, that's why you made me sit through two sessions with the police shrink. Because you need it? I'm fine, there's nothing wrong with me. What? You bastard! Oh, oh buddy! Get out of here! Come on! Let's go with me! Hey, 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 w w what's oh. going on here? Who the hell are you? Police! Good! I want this mongrel arrested hey, hey, for assault! Look, did you assault him? I belted him, if that's what you mean, yeah. All right, fellas, why don't you just go home and sleep it off? No, eh? he wants to charge him, okay? Everyone down the station, please. Joe, don't you think you're overreacting? Leave me. Let's go! Out here. Evan, go on. Sorry. PJ, go home. Three is definitely enough to handle this. This is ridiculous. It could be sorted out down at the park. I couldn't very well buck Joe's call, could I? So what's all this about, Mr. McKellen? Well, I decked him. That's what it's all about. Would you mind telling us why? Uh, that's my business. Well, then we'll have to assume it was an unprovoked assault, which could be serious. Unprovoked like hell. I thought you two were supposed to be mates. So did I. Till I found him with his tongue halfway down my wife's throat. Is that provocation enough for you? Well, Ronnie overreacted, as usual. You were kissing another man. We were celebrating. On your own in the back parlour. What is she getting at? I don't need to take this. Constable Parrish did ask you a question. Look, we'd all had too much to drink. Okay, and Ronnie made a mountain out of a molehill. Probably because he wanted to. Why would he want to? Because he's jealous of Gavin. You know, he's a big player in the stock market, horse owner, right out of Ronnie's class. I think we should just send him all home. Hang on, you're the one who insisted on bringing them in. Yeah, well, he was provoked. I mean, if I'd been Ronnie, I would have belted her with him as well. That's not really the point, though, is it? But you're right. Let's see if we can avoid a lot of unnecessary paperwork. 
So why don't you just shake hands and forget about it? Oh, come on, darling. I want to go home. I'm sure Ronnie just got the wrong end of the stick. Of course he did. Go on, you idiot. Shake hands. You've got the horse race to think about. Maybe I did get it wrong. OK, so it looks like it's up to you, Mr Harrison. If you choose to take this further, it could become very public. You might regret it in the morning. Yeah, when you sober up. I guess I don't have much choice, do I? Great. Oh, Night, everyone. All over and done with. See you in the morning. Joe? Can I have a word? I think she had the cheek to suggest I shouldn't come into work tomorrow. Well, you shouldn't. Oh, that'd be right. Look, a bit of R&R &R wouldn't hurt, would it? I don't need any R&R. &R. I've already had two days off. It's a dumb idea. Yeah. This isn't coffee. No, it's warm milk. Caffeine's a stimulant. This'll help you sleep. I don't need any help sleeping. What's wrong with everybody? I'm fine. I'm not under any stress. Then why are you shouting? Listen, Joe, I've been in the job a lot longer than you have. And I know how someone could be affected by oh, shooting. Just because you were. I'm going to bed. Here, why don't you have this? Perhaps then you won't wake up every time I go to the dunny. Ben, can you and Evan cover Joe's workload yeah, for Thanks today? for the wake-up call. Joe, sorry I've slipped in. You're not supposed to be here, mate. Yeah, give me a break, mate. I can't sit around all day twiddling my thumbs. Well, you could order it too. Yeah, I know that, PJ. Don't listen to him. I'm fine. The psychologist said so. What exactly did the psychologist say, Joe? Mount Don't let him walk If the psychologist seems to think she's fine and she's right for Well, work. that's the point. She's not. Okay. We'll play it by ear today. See what the psych report says. Thanks. Uh, McKellar's stables. Sounds like Ronnie and Mr Harrison wrote it again. Yeah? And where are you going? Yeah, come on, sir. It's not exactly heavy duty. OK. But take it easy. Cheers. Evan, you go with her. No. I'll go. I don't need a nurse, mate. This isn't CI business. It is now. Just concentrate on your driving, will you? Look, don't tell me how to drive. I'm perfectly capable. Look, you got what you wanted. You're back on the job, so don't push it, eh? Yeah, well, it's my case. So don't you push it. I, I can do what I want. I own it. Yeah, and I do something, will you? They've been yelling like this for the last 20 minutes. It's all right, we'll handle it. Thank you. I don't want a mongrel like you having anything to do with my horse. She'd be nothing if it wasn't for me, all right? Yeah. You don't know the first thing about training. Okay, okay, settle down. Look, settle down. Settle down. Shut up, the pair of you. Huh? Oh, it's about time you got here. You tell this idiot to get out of my way. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Harrison. Let's just find out what's going on here first, eh? Simple. I want to remove my property and he won't let property. It's not a piece of furniture, it's a bloody okay, horse, right? OK, OK. I thought you two sorted out your differences last night. Not as far as I'm concerned. Now, you're going to make him hand over faint hope, or aren't you? I'm well, going to do what I think's appropriate, yeah. Mr Harrison. Is there any good reason not to hand the animal over? Yeah, well, if he takes faint hope off to the tailor, she won't stand a chance at all in the Oaks. Tailors is a stable out on Willow Creek Road. Yeah, I'm aware of that, Detective. Are you sure you're not just doing this to get even? Yeah, that's what it is. It's spite. You're only hurting yourself here, mate. Wouldn't it be better to leave the horse with someone who understands it? <laughs> she doesn't need understanding. She's a horse. She either runs fast or she doesn't. That just shows how much you know. Look, it's my horse. I want her now. But why don't you wait until after the race? If Mr Harrison is the legal owner of the horse, he is entitled to take her. I must have some rights. Not unless your contract says so. We're square. He's paid up. Now, if you don't mind. Thank you. You just couldn't keep out of it, could you? It's not my nature. I couldn't cope with the fact that I was handling the situation just fine. Not bad. It didn't go off the rails, rant or rave. Hmm? No sign of stress, huh? You sure? It's all right, Joe. You've made your point. Well, thank you for your gracious endorsement, sir. Oh, Anything the matter? What does it look like? I spilt my damn coffee. What are you asking? She could have critical incident stress, you know. She's displaying some of the signs. Bad temper, she's clumsy. That's Joe on any day of the week. Don't look for stuff that's not there, Dr. Freud. 
Faint hope has gone missing from Taylor's stables. Probably stolen. Yeah, uh, just hang on, I'll change your shirt. It's all right, Ben and Evan can go. Taylor's. It's the same horse. OK, but with PJ. I told you before, I don't need a nursemaid, OK? Hey, horse thieves can be dangerous hombres. Very funny. Oh, you're kidding. That is fine, I hope. Take it easy, just slow right down. OK. Now she... Uh, she's down. Careful you don't spook her. Call the vet, will you? I was just about to. So the horse just fell over? One minute she was running like a maniac, the next lying on the ground. So how's the animal now? Well, we left her with Tibor. He couldn't see any injuries. So the horse wasn't stolen after all? Well, we don't know what happened yet, but I think there's something sus about She's it. She's jumped the fence. You sure about that, Makes sense. You? What made her jump? Why would she freak out like that? Okay, don't get worked up. It's OK. Tibor just called. Faint hope is dead. There was a needle in her neck. He seems to think she might have been doped or something. See, something sus. Parish one, Hashem nil. Well, we got nothing from Taylor's. No one saw the horse disappear. Can you confirm that? Oh, it checks out. Anyway, look, it's not going to be good for business knocking off one of your own horses. Well, so it's some kind of racing scam. Well, who'd gain by it? The competition. Someone trying to get her out of the oaks. It, no, it's more personal than that. There's a lot of bad blood between Ronnie and Mr Harrison. One of them getting their own back. Well, I'd go for Harrison. I mean, he's pretty dark on Ronnie for belting him. Look, he's not going to destroy valuable investment out of mere spite. Well, why not? That's why he took faint hope off her trainer, even though he knew it had affected chances in the Yeah, that's according to the trainer. No, I believe we should be looking at Ronnie himself. He really loved that horse. Why would he kill it? Well, he didn't want to lose it, so I'd rather see it dead. No, I'm going to have a word with Ronnie. We'll have a word with him. Joe, it is still my case. Actually, it is a CI matter now. I'd feel like to join. Faint hope's been a part of my life for three years. I bred her. I'd never harm her. Not even to get back at Gavin Harrison. No. Okay, Ronnie, but for argument's sake, if you had wanted to harm her, it wouldn't be too difficult for you, would it? I didn't touch her. You know your way around Taylor's. No, I wasn't at Taylor's. I haven't been to Taylor's in months. It's all right, Ronnie. Just tell us where you were this morning after we saw you with Mr Harrison. I stayed at the stables. Did the rounds. I checked the horses. Can anyone vouch for that? Look, I'm not sure. Someone probably can. Well, anyone in particular? I don't know. Talk to Baz, talk to Marlene. God, this is insane. After Harrison took Faint Hope away, I ducked off for a bit of a sleep. We uh, started earlier in here, you know. So, Ronnie could have left the place as well? well? Could have, but I doubt it. How's that? Oh, he's a bit of a stickler, you know, works through most mornings, keeping an eye on things. That's what makes him such a great trainer. They don't uh, remember seeing him. Doesn't mean he wasn't here, but... My stable hands always nicking off for a smoke. Baz Dugan. Ah, uh, uh, Baz is Ronnie's brother-in-law. And he's a top bloke. He wouldn't hurt a fly, let alone a horse. You did a good job on Harrison, though. Well, that's different. I mean, some things that provoke a saint. Is anything the matter? Uh, Mrs McKellar, can you confirm your husband was here this morning between 8 and 11? Well, not specifically, no, but he would have been. He always is. But you're not sure? No. Look, I might leave you to it. Um, if you need me, I'll be in the house. Hello, Baz. Thanks for your help. Uh, think of anything, give us a bell, eh? Um, how much do you reckon uh, Faint Hope would be worth? Dead, I mean. If she's insured, a lot. Yeah, and who would own the insurance? The owner, Gavin Harrison. Oh, right. Well, thanks for that. So Harrison is the only one who would gain by the horse's death. It's too early to call. We don't even know if she's insured. Well, let's go straight to the horse's mouth. It's pretty obvious he's responsible, isn't it? Is it? Of course it is. Ronnie McKellar. We don't have any hard evidence to link Ronnie McKellar to the death of your horse. And besides, uh, he's not the only suspect. I thought he'd be your prime suspect. Well, it's been suggested to us that uh, you could be involved. 
for the insurance. Is the horse insured? Of course it is. For how much? I wouldn't know. Ronnie took care of that. Ronnie took care of everything. Look, Ronnie knows horses. What to feed them, how to train them. He'd know how much antibiotic or poison or arsenic or whatever would kill him. He'd also know to use an 18 gauge needle on the horse. The one found in Fate Hope's neck was a 22 gauge. Not big enough, that's why it broke off. <laughs> well, I can't explain that. But we actually don't have any evidence against Ronnie. Well, perhaps you should get out there and find some. Oh, we'll find something. Don't worry about that. The cheek of the guy has got us told us we ought to be fabricating evidence against Ronnie. Thanks for that. Didn't quite Fine say out. that. You wasn't near enough. A Tibor, now the horse died from an overdose of procaine penicillin administered to the jugular instead of the muscle, which is why she went so troppy. Yeah, another slip-up Ronnie wouldn't make. Yeah, penicillin, that's an antibiotic, isn't it? Yeah, mm. so? Well, Harrison said Ronnie would know how much antibiotic to use to kill faint hope. Procaine penicillin. Uh, it took a wild guess. Yeah, no, he slipped up. Yeah, and he was definitely on edge. He's hiding something. Well, the trainer was on edge too, and plenty of other people could have motive. No, no, Joe sounds right to me. Thank you. How about this? A week ago, Gavin Harrison increased the insurance on Faint Hope to $200,000. He took care of it, not Ronnie. Yeah? Well, isn't it obvious? A week before the horse dies, he increases its value. Well, he would have raised insurance because the value went up. I mean, she was selective of the oaks. He didn't know about that then. Would have had a good idea. Well, maybe he couldn't afford to take the chance of her losing. I mean, Harrison's not the big shot he pretends to be. Apparently he's got debts and unpaid bills all over the place. Garden hasn't been paid for two months and he had to lay off his secretary who's threatening to sue. Harrison has got a serious cash flow problem. 200 grand would be more than welcome to him right now. I told Gavin to leave the horse with Ronnie McKellar. All that fuss and now the poor animal's dead which means even more fuss. Is your husband in? No, he isn't. I thought he worked from home. He does. There's an office extension out the back, ugly thing. But he's not there now. I haven't seen him, not since you were here before. Do you know where he is now? Sorry. Maybe his secretary might know. Oh, no, sorry, she was sacked, wasn't she? Of course not. She's on holidays. We heard there was some problem over back pay? Nonsense. Not you. Gardner's on holidays too, is he? No. He's only part-time. Why? Isn't it true you're having some financial difficulties? I look around you. We're doing fine. Mrs. Harrison, you haven't done anything wrong, but if your husband has and you're lying for him, well, that puts you in hot water too. Is that really what you want? Actually, you might like to try the Golden Poplars Motel. Gavin sometimes has business meetings there. Thank you. Well, she knows something's going on all right, it's obvious. You just don't like her. No, not really. Pretending everything's sunlight and roses, hiding from the truth. Well, that sounds familiar. Jack, people under stress do crazy things. There's the Jack. Okay? Get outside and call an ambulance. I can cope with the sight of an injured man, okay? Constable, just do it. Hi. You found Mr. Uh, Harrison? I'm Senior Detective Hasham. This is Constable Parrish. Joe. So, what can you tell us? Someone's belted him. I well, figured that much. But you're new around here, aren't you? Yeah, Josh Carmichael. Just hey. arrived. Uh, where from? Uh, the patient. Oh, I can tell you more when I've had a good look at him. Well, we need to talk to him as soon as possible. Yeah? Well, um, I wouldn't hang around. This could take some time. OK, cheers. Just let us know when he comes in, eh? Thanks. The staff at the Golden Poplars, they can't tell me anything. Apparently the manager's going to be back in an hour or so. All right, I'll see how I go with what I've got. Aye, aye, aye. Joe hasn't discovered a thing. 
Yeah, having a bad day, Joe. No, I just got a whole lot better, actually. You should see the new doctor at the hospital. His name's, um, Josh Carmichael. Oh, you, you've met him? A friend of a friend from uni asked me to show him around. Oh, tough assignment. Yeah, I'll cope. So, what do we think Harrison was up to at the Golden Poplars? I mean, pretty dodgy if it gets him beaten up like that. No details from his wife? It's pretty vague about the whole thing. Maybe because she doesn't want to know, you know, the type of boss, as long as you've got a nice house and expensive clothes. Any connection between this and the racehorse, do you think? That's difficult to say. Yeah, I think Gavin's having an affair. That's what Rowena was hinting at when she told us he'd be at the motel. Maybe. Deep down, she wanted him to get sprung. That's why she sent us there. The point is, do we think that a jealous husband went after Harrison? Or even Rowena herself? Oh, come off it. He's a reasonably big guy. What, and a woman can't stand up to a big, strong bloke like him? No, no, not that one. She's not the type to get a hand. If she's a woman scorned, she's capable Look, of... If she assaulted him, why would she tell us where he Maybe was? Maybe because she was worried she went too far. You make it up as you go along. That's not good police work. Maybe Parrish has a point. No, I'm sorry, but I've really no idea who'd want to do that to Gavin. Oh, you had no idea who he was meeting at the motel? None at all, no. Oh, he's, this is going to take much longer. If you don't mind my saying so, Mrs Harrison, you don't seem too concerned. Of course I'm concerned. About your husband or about being questioned? Well, both, I suppose. Didn't you think that it was just a little strange that he was conducting business at, at a motel? Not really, no. But you had some kind of suspicions, didn't you? I don't follow. He was meeting a girlfriend today and you knew it, didn't you? <laughs> and if that's true, I don't really think he's worth protecting. <laughs> it really doesn't matter, you know. About? That he had a mistress. He was with her today? If he was at the motel, then probably, yes. Uh, what, what's her name? I don't know. And I don't care. We have an understanding. It suits us both. Oh, I told you, didn't I? It would appear she's off my list, which leaves Ronnie as my next most likely candidate. Well, Baz Dugan doesn't think so. Oh, of course he's going to say that. I mean, Baz's family thinks Ronnie's a good bloke. And don't forget, Ronnie showed us what he could do at the That park. was a spontaneous outburst. I think what happened at the motel was more premeditated. All right. I'll have a chat with Gavin. I'd sooner he was left alone for a few more hours. He's taken a nasty blow to the throat, so, you know, he wouldn't be able to talk much anyway. Is that the only injury? He's also sustained a blow to the solar plexus and to the groin. Do you reckon his attacker used a weapon? Well, he's taken three of the classic strikes. Throat, solar plexus, and the coup de gras, the groin. <laughs> sorry, bit of a devotee. Yeah, well, sorry I see. So, in your view, whoever attacked Mr Harrison knew exactly what they were doing? In my humble opinion, yes. Maximum damage with minimum effort. Ah, uh, yeah, you know who's into all that stuff, don't you? Who? It's right here, um, sports page. Here we go. Medals in Taekwondo were awarded to blah, 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 and Barry Dugan. Yeah, I've done some taekwondo, so I have a lot of guys around town. But how many of them might have a grudge against Gavin? Oh, I've got no grudge against the guy. You sure? Not even for the death of Faint Hope? So it was him, was it? Don't know, but Ronnie's your brother-in-law and he was angry with Harrison. Uh, yeah, but come on. I like Ronnie. I work for the guy, but I wouldn't bash anyone up for him. What about for Marlene? Come again? Harrison coming on to her at the pub, making her look cheap. <laughs> Are you serious? Why? Oh, do I look like the type of guy who goes around defending his sister's honour and all that type of garbage? <laughs> well, you might be. Well, I'm not. Besides, it takes two to tango. Meaning? Look, what happened at the pub last night may have been a big shock to Ronnie, but it comes as no surprise to me. They always say the husbands are last to know, don't they? You mean Marlene and Harrison have been having an affair? For almost a year. I'm surprised they got away with it for so long. I'm sure I believe him. About the affair? No, I believe that all right. I mean, about not using his taekwondo on Harrison. Uh, I'm inclined to give him the benefit of the doubt. Well, there's always Marlene, the mistress. They were lovers. Never heard of a lover's quarrel? Mm-hmm. Last night's events must have put a fair bit of pressure on their relationship, being sprung like that. That's a supposition. And anyway, we've got the same physical problem as what we've got with the wife. Not all women are weak and defenceless, you know. Now, where are you going? None of your business. You'll only try and block me anyway. Joe? 
If you want me to agree with everything you say, maybe you shouldn't be here. Oh, you'd love that, wouldn't you? Hey, you've got nothing to prove. Now, you've done really well. Why don't you just go home, put your feet up? PJ, if Joe needs to go home, that's my call, not yours. No. But are you impartial? What? Well, she did save your life. I'm not doing her any favours. Yeah, all right, all right. I'm sorry. But maybe you should. She's been right on the ball all day. I just don't think we should let our guard down, that's all. If it wasn't up in the first place... What happens if Joe was challenging the job of the moment? Huh? Just check with the martial arts club. Guess what? Baz isn't the only member of the family to train there. Marlene? Yep, his big sister. No medals, but pretty proficient in taekwondo, apparently. I can't this wait till I get home. The doctor's signing me out now. Then we might as well do it here, Mr Harrison. See, we want to know who attacked you. I have no idea. Oh, you must have some idea. I didn't see them. They came up behind me and grabbed me around the neck. Your injuries are to the front. Consistent with a martial arts attack. I was kicked while I was on the floor. And I was practically unconscious by then. What were you doing at the motel anyway? Waiting for a client. Who? Sorry. Commercial in confidence and all that. Was it this client that attacked you? No, definitely not. How do you know if they attacked you from behind? Well, this client wouldn't do something like that. Mr Harrison, we're pretty confident we know who attacked you. It was Marlene McKellar, wasn't it? <laughs> it's ridiculous. Well, we know she's capable of it. And we will find out in the end. We'll have to talk to pretty much everyone you know, but if you're happy for them to learn that you're the subject all of right. the police in this... It was Marlene. She followed me to the motel. She was all worked up about faint hope, but blaming me for its death. Why? Because I'd taken it away from Ronnie. Uh, we heard that you were having an affair with Marlene. <sighs> Just because of last night at the hotel. Kevin, we know about your financial problems, how you raised the insurance on faint hope. Her value went up. In my line of work, it's common to have cash flow problems. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with my finances. Your brother says you've been involved with Harrison for quite a while. Baz, well, he will suck up to anyone, especially the police. Why were you meeting him at the Golden Poplars? I wasn't. I've never been there. We talked to the manager. Either you or your double have been seen there more than once with Kevin Harrison. All right, all right, I admit it. We were having an affair. But I never bashed him, why would I? Do you keep procaine penicillin at your stables? Yes, so do a lot of other stables. If we check, will your usage match your supply? I had nothing to do with the death of that horse. No, I think you did. Either you killed it yourself, or you gave Harrison the drug so he could... No, it. he stole it! I put it to you that you were both in it together. OK, OK. So, can, can you please tell us what happened? When I found out how that horse died, I checked my medical supplies. The drug was gone. Two batches. I realised it must have been Gavin. But why would you think it was him? Because he told me he'd be coming into some money soon. When the horse died, I, I realised it must have been the insurance money. Is that why you beat him up? Because he stole the drug and killed the horse? He dumped me. He promised we'd go away together. I met him at the hotel thinking that we'd plan our future together. But he told me he was going to stick with his wife. So thank you and goodbye, Marlene. Lousy bastard. Mr Harrison. Do you mind? We'd like you to come down to the station to answer some questions, if you wouldn't mind. We are having dinner. My husband is just out of hospital. Can't this wait until morning? I uh, know. We've got a statement from Mrs McKellar. I wouldn't believe anything she said. I suppose she denied attacking me. No, she confirmed that. She also said you stole some penicillin from her medical supplies. Let's take this down to the station. And killed your own horse to get the insurance money, which of Constable, course you won't be entitled she to she is trying to get back at me. Look, let's discuss this down at the station, no. shall we? This is a ridiculous trumped-up charge and I will not be part of it. Well, you've got no choice, actually. <laughs> Who the hell do you think you're talking to? I am respected in this town. Now, uh, let's go, shall we? Do you want to put the cuffs on? Sorry. What 
What's the matter? We got a result, didn't we? We're supposed to be bloody discreet, but you had to announce to everyone in the pub what we were taking him in for. I didn't have to go off his head. It's just unfortunate that he'll probably get away with some minor sentence. Should lock him up and throw away the key. Joe, his family life is stuffed. Forget about his standing in the community. I mean, he won't be able to show his face in town again. Good. What's the uh, story with Gavin Harrison? Something tells me you already know. Well, uh, you should have heard the rumours flying after these two left last night. Uh, about how he killed his own horse, how he's having an affair with Ronnie's wife. Anyway, after you left, Rowena was just left sitting there. And well, she must have known that everyone was talking about it. Yeah, well, she should have opened up her eyes years ago. When Gavin came back, he was, well, broken. That's actually and not long enough. Everyone just stared, and no one said a word. It was awful. Well, thanks for the update. Righto. Where? When was this? No, OK, we're what? onto it. They're known to us. Yeah, thanks. for it. Triple O call, Harrison's place. Female voice screaming for help, then cut off. All of us on this one. No one's inside. Place is a hell of a mess. Someone's put up a struggle. Was it Rowena? Well, her handbag was on the floor. The door was wide open, so Harrison must have dragged her out. If it was Harrison, who else? Are you okay? What would not be? Great day. Day is setting up roadblocks. Okay, if he's taken off, he won't get far. He might not be on the run. He could be holed up somewhere. Could be. PJ, any ideas? We need to check his regular haunts. The golden poplars. Come on. Right, I'll take Ben. Yeah, PJ, it's my case. No, it's mine, Joe. And I choose Ben. Joe. If you do you see or hear from a place that is not. Please don't hesitate to come. Okay. Thanks, Bob. This is such a waste of time. We should be out there patrolling. Wait to see what Ben and PJ turn up first. You two hold the fort. I want to see if Chris knows anything. She thinks I can't handle it like PJ. Someone's got to stay here, Joe. Yeah. Bugger nearly ran me off the road. Who? Harrison and his flesh jag. Yeah, uh, where was this? Steaming along like you own the place. You almost put me in a ditch. Okay, I want to make okay. a complaint. Where was this? On the back road, out to Ronnie's. The, the McKellar stables. Yeah, that's right. Let's go. Hey, Joe, we're going to have to tell the boss. Yeah, he's busy. Hey, hey, what about my complaint, eh? Uh, uh, just fill that in. No sign of the jag. Yeah, we might as well check it out now we're here. You take the house, I'll take the stables. Joe! Shouldn't we stick together? Look what happened last time. Yeah, just go. So what now? The cleanest city is around here somewhere. Not Thomas 900 508. I'll get it. Yeah, I'll get the manager. Alright, receiving. Uh, PJ, there's been a definite sighting of Harrison. He's headed for McKellar's. Uh, Jones and Harry's following it up. You said Joe. She sent herself. Radioed him when she was already on the road. On my way. Ben! Oi, Ben! Jesus, sorry, mate.
down, Mr. Harrison. Take one more step and I'll blow your brains out. Joe! Joe, they're here. I just saw the car. Just stay where you are, Jonesy. What is it? What's the matter? I said stay where you are. this once and for all. Oh, Kevin, please! Two's are out to BKC. Urgent. Mail with a firearm and our last request back up. Same It's over. Everything's gone to hell. No, it hasn't. But it's certainly gonna if you pull that trigger, mate. Don't you think? <laughs> what would you know about it? <laughs> I know, trust me. I shot someone three days ago, mate. Want to know what it's like, Kevin? It's hell. You can't get it out of your head. Or oh, he dreams. You relive it every second of the day. in slow motion, did you know that? You see the bullet firing. The blood. You see the person going down in agony and you know you're responsible. You're just trying to scare me. I haven't even told you about the sounds yet. That scream never leaves your head for an instant. Is that what you want? It doesn't matter. I won't be around to hear it anyway. Don't bet on it. You pull that trigger, I'll be in you so fast you won't have a chance to turn on yourself. And you'll have the rest of your life in jail to go through what I've been going through. Is that what you want? I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. Put it down, Gavin. Turn your life round while you still got the chance. Don't secure the rifle. Well, Harrison knew that there was a rifle and ammo at Ronnie's place, and that's why he went there. Good job, Baz spotted him. And Joe took the initiative. How's Rowena? She's not too good. She's been sedated. And Gavin's under lock and key in the psych ward, and Ben's going to let us know when we can interview him. Right. Anyway, congratulations, Parrish. You handled yourself well today, but uh, all the same, we've had a pretty tough week. Yeah, I'm fine. Be that as it may, try and get a good night's sleep, eh? We'll uh, talk about the debriefing in the morning. Putting yourself in a situation like that. Waltzing in, no backup. You could have got killed, don't you realise that, Joe? Yeah, of course I do. And all this gung-ho crap about the shooting, that you didn't need any therapy, that you were fine. I heard what you said today. Are you finished? I haven't even started yet. Yeah, no, you just hang on a minute. I handled that situation and it worked out for the best. You were lucky. Yeah, and as for the shooting, yeah, I have been putting on a front. Do you want to know why? Because of you. You and your bloody male arrogance assuming right from the start that I was going to go to pieces because I'm a woman. Jo, I, I, it was never... there in your whole attitude. It always is all that smug, patronising crap. 
You know, I wasn't going to give you the satisfaction, OK? No, just, just, no, li- just leave Joe, just, just, just listen. Will you listen to me, please? OK, all right, I admit it. I, I have been a bit overprotective. A bit. But I was right. You were affected by the shooting. Yeah, you were right. Is that what you wanted to hear? No, no, I just want to say that I'm sorry. No, you don't. You just want to prove to me that you've been right all along. And you've done that so 